these animals is because they personify some particular human traits. So you can kind of lock into a sense of something um, without having to explain it too much, like deer being vulnerable and dogs being loyal, and you can kind of tap straight into sort of universal personalities and, and tropes, I suppose, by using animals. Um, because it, it, I suppose the work's not necessarily about the animals, it's about people and about us, about society. Um, the animals are kind of a, a way in for me, I suppose. Let's over the um, pewter and my kids up at the top. That's where the sculptures started. Um, and they've got this sort of sense of sort of being um, roughly gesturally put together. So it's about the act of making them with my hands and getting the sort of, uh, what's the right word, the, the right sense about them, the right physicality, the right kind of feeling behind them, but doing it very gesturally. And I, there's a lot in those maquettes that I wanted to translate into the larger works. Um, which is still a sense of roughness. And I always find with sculpting that there's this kind of thing that you, you have to weigh up how real you go um, versus kind of how symbolic you want to go. And I kind of think the closer that you get to, to things being perfect and anatom anatomically correct, the further away the works go for me being a part of what I do. They stop being so imaginary, I suppose, and I don't feel like I can, I can kind of own them as much as an artist. You can see thumbprints of mine in the monkeys as well, which I kind of, I liked a lot too. Um, someone was joking about the fact that if they ever needed to find out whose works those were in 200 years, they just scanned the thumbprint in it. Everything was placed with a purpose. Um, I'm kind of a big fan of when you get into a space, you engage with works in a, in a particular way because of how they're presented or how they're kind of positioned. Um, like the horse being almost unaware of people outside because it's really engaged in that struggle whereas the fox is really aware of anyone that's coming in and is more the aggressor I suppose whereas the deer is I, I've been to deer farms and deer when they're, when they're in an enclosed area and they're kind of struggling or they're frightened they always turn their back to what they're scared of and they'll kind of they'll check over their shoulder, or they'll huddle into a corner, or they'll huddle into each other. It's it's just so it's so interesting to find different responses, I suppose. Um, yeah, I'm interested in I'm interested in exploring um, the imaginary as well. So it makes it makes sense that there are fish fables and, and fairy tales. And I mean, I like fairy tales because they they can be quite dark and grotesque at the same time as being bright and hopeful and sometimes horribly moralistic and. Um, and sometimes really open to interpretation. So, yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>